Hey everybody, it's Ross over at The Daily Jewels. I hope you're well. Today, the University of Florida released the international shark attack file for 2020. We're going to be doing a deep dive on the report with shark scientist Christian Parton. So stick around because there's going to be lots of useful information. Christian, thanks so much for taking some time out to, uh, to join us. Uh, obviously, today is quite an important day. The University of Florida have brought out their shark attack file report for 2020. Um, before we dive into sort of what this year's report tells us, could you tell us a little bit about sort of what the report is for and, and why it's important that we do it? So basically, Ross, so thanks for having me, first of all. Um, yeah, no it's essentially uh, just a kind of collection of statistics, really. And statistics are very, very important for us as scientists to, you know, base data on essentially. Um, statistics really, really help us understand what's going on in the world. And so ISAF uh, regularly collect this, so it's every single year. Um, and it helps us identify trends that are going on in specific areas, but also globally as well. Mm. And how is the information compiled? Is, is there just sort of scientists from all around the world sort of throwing everything into a central database or, or what? Do you know much about how that happens? So I'm not a shark attack expert as per se, but I have a sort of broad knowledge on the issue. I'm pretty sure it's people just reporting, you know, incidents from around the world. So obviously when a shark attack happens, that's going to be put on file uh, in medical reports, at hospitals. You know, most people are probably going to have to go to hospital for some kind of treatment on a, on a shark bite. Um, and that, that data then is requested by ISAF and it gets sent to them from different parts uh, of the world. And, and who is ISAF? Is that the International Shark Attack File? or is that, Yes, is that sorry, I'm acronyming yeah. it uh, for, for ease <laughs> of saying. <laughs> That's all right, man. It's all good. Um, so in terms of, because I did a little bit of research very briefly before we came on, and, and I'm not an expert, which is why you're here. Um, but the, the report seems to have started around 1958, which is over 60 years ago. That's the same age as my dad. And I, I would love to see the trends and the information that's been happening um, and see if there's things that we can identify, like you know, sort of tipping points in population or shark attacks being higher or lower in terms of one particular point. I'd be really interested to see what happened in 1975 if shark attacks were just a complete low because everybody saw Jaws and no one went swimming. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really, really interesting to see, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. That would be, that'd be something to investigate for sure. Yeah, well, we, I'm sure if we contact ISF, we can, we can dig it all out. That would be really cool to actually just sort of see, did Jaws, you know, save lives technically? You know? <laughs> um, so in terms of this year's report, Christian, um, could you take us through sort of the top line? Uh, what's the key information that w that's been sort of shown this year? Uh, this year from uh, ISAF, they uh, investigated 129 alleged shark human interactions worldwide from 2020 uh, and they confirmed 57 unprovoked shark bites on humans and 39 provoked bites now it's really important to distinguish between unprovoked attacks so unprovoked bites or provoked attacks or provoked bites so unprovoked attacks are essentially when an attack on a human occurs uh, with no provocation of the shark so it just you know comes out of nowhere essentially whereas a provoked attack is where the human has initiated that interaction so that's for example when someone might be antagonizing the shark or touching it um, perhaps you might be spearfishing so there's you know, food in the water that would be classed as a provoked attack um, or it might be for example uh, scientists or fishermen who are unhooking sharks and then the shark has sort of bitten them on the side. So that, that would be classed as uh, provoked attacks. But the, the really interesting stuff is the unprovoked attacks, which was uh, 57 of those for 2020. And is that quite a high number when you look at the unprovoked attacks compared to, say, the last few years? So that's actually lower, um, according to ISAF, than the previous five years. So the average for the last five years or so is about 80, I think it is, 80 unprovoked attacks. Um, and that's from about 2015 to 2019. So it's actually lower this year than um, average. However, interestingly, the fatalities for 2020 are slightly higher than the average for the last five years. So that's quite an interesting kind of comparison there. So you're getting slightly less attacks, but there have been more fatal attacks uh, in the last year. Do you think there's a, a particular reason for that or, or an explanation? So I think looking at it kind of broadly, I think you can't understate the impact that the pandemic has had around the world. So, 
you know, various different countries went into lockdowns. Um, they differed in you know, the length of the lockdown and the strictness of the lockdown, but you know, pretty much all countries had some form of a lockdown. And that would have meant that less people were entering the water. And I do think that has had an influence on the number of bites that have happened around the world, definitely. And what about the fatalities? Because it's really interesting that less people are getting sort of um, attacked or having interactions. But of those that are having those encounters, more people have died. Is, is there, um, maybe the information doesn't go into this much depth, but is it a particular species that we're encountering that has a higher proportion of fatalities? Or, um, or do you think there's something else that's not necessarily species dependent that's maybe ex- goes some way to explain that, that particular trend? So there's a lot of different factors that can determine whether a shark bite is non-fatal or fatal. And it's really, really difficult to pin it down to one specific reason. Um, There's a couple of different things that I can kind of think of off the top of my head. So it might depend on the size of the shark. So for example, a large great white shark is going to do a lot more damage that might lead to a fatality compared to, say, let's a black tip shark. Um, which is significantly smaller. So a a large great white is going to do significantly more damage. But also then you're thinking about where the bite's taking place on the body. So if that bite hits a really important area of the femoral artery, for for example, that's going to cause a significant loss of blood very, very quickly compared to, let's say, a small bite on the hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also you're looking at, in some incidents, the distance that person is who's been bitten from medical attention. So there are obviously isolated incidents where you know people have been miles away from the nearest medical attention and have not been able to get there quickly enough. And that's going to definitely have an impact on whether that person survives from that shark bite or, or dies from it, essentially. So it's, it's very difficult to say. I don't know if ISAF goes into the specifics of those, uh, of those fatalities, but um, I imagine in those isolated incidents, those factors will have been played. So size of the shark, uh, perhaps species of the shark as well, but also you know where the bite took place and uh, how far they were from medical attention. Okay. okay. And in terms of the, the mapping of where the attacks have been happening, is there, um, is there a particular hotspot or, or a new location that's maybe presented itself as a, an area where you're more likely to get attacked by sharks now? What does, what does the, the geographical information sort of tell us about what's happening? So Florida for many, many years has been known as the shark attack capital of the world. Now, I was actually there during the first lockdown. Uh, There's a beach there called Moose Myrna Beach, which is uh, the beach that has the most shark attacks in the world, um, which is which is pretty crazy. Um, So so Florida remains the shark attack capital of the world. I I think it was perhaps 33 percent of cases were were based in florida which is you know a large amount i'd have to double check that but i think it was 33 percent in florida but then in terms of the fatalities australia in 2020 had um, a larger number than you know what had previously been reported for and again i think this is probably due to you know a few isolated factors like i like i mentioned before but australia seems to have more fatalities this year than previous years okay and um obviously even though there has been a pandemic and less people are going swimming, but we're still seeing, you know, a number of people encountering sharks and, and as we sort of said, at a higher level of fatality, what can we do to beyond sort of educating ourselves and using things like, you know, the shark attack file reports, what else can we maybe do to sort of make sure that, you know, when we do encounter a shark, we, you know, both parties come out, you know, safe or, or unharmed. And what can we do to pr- potentially prevent shark encounters or, or shark attacks? So, I mean, there's lots and lots of different things we can do. So, I mean, firstly, it's a case of trying to limit that negative interaction in the first place. So it's making sure that we don't go in the water at certain times of day. So sharks are crepuscular hunters. That means they hunt at dawn and dusk. So those two times of day, particularly when the levels of light are lower, so visibility is a little bit poorer, um, I would definitely recommend not swimming at those times of day, particularly in areas where sharks have been known to um, bite humans before. So that's one. Then things like not swimming near estuaries where runoff from the land, for example, might uh, lead sharks or lure sharks in from you know, dead animals or something like that. And then it's just about being kind of sensible and 
being water aware. So you wouldn't go swimming near prey species of sharks. So that's large bait balls of fish, um, seal colonies, or perhaps even you know, a, a whale carcass that's washed up. Those are all signs not to enter the water. Um, so it's, it's sort of assessing the situation before you enter the water. But as we know, shark encounters do happen. They happen all the time. Um, I think it's great when a shark encounter happens, but it's about being safe. And so when you do see a shark, there are a few things that you can do to make sure that that is a safe encounter. So from my advice would be keep that shark in your eyesight make sure you're constantly looking at it because a lot of shark bites happen when people can't, you know, aren't, aren't paying attention to what's going on around them. Um, then it would be remain calm in the water, remain calm and composed, no splashing, you know, shouting, screaming, splashing, shouting and screaming. They're all signs um, of what a prey animal would be doing in distress. So if it's an injured seal, for example, that would be splashing and flailing around and that's going to draw the shark in closer. So it's about being calm and composed um, but you know, if there is a shark that maybe comes a little bit too close, if you have certain items on you, for example, I know a lot of people um, go out snorkeling or or diving or whatever with GoPros and you know camera equipment and stuff, you can always use that as a barrier between you and the shark to just kind of you know steer it in a certain direction. So there are lots and lots of things that we can do as uh, swimmers and, and water users to make sure that um, we're safe and that the sharks are safe as well. Great. Well, that, that's fantastic advice. Um, I think because you and I were talking earlier, we're going to put together a sort of a 10 point guide as to sort of how, sh uh, how to stay sort of shark safe. Um, and I'm sure it's going to include some of those wonderful points you just raised, but, but, but we'll put a link to the shark safe guide uh, in the description for the video. That's, um, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Thank you. I, um, I also did a, a brief video on my YouTube channel, Shark Bites, um, about shark fatalities, particularly in Australia. Um, and so I discussed that. And so there's a little bit more um, on that video that I did across on my channel. So you can go and check that out if you're, out if you're interested. Wonderful. Well, we'll put a link to that particular video um, in, in the description as well. And, and just, to, just a shout out to Christian's channel. It's, it's called Shark Bites. It's, it's a really great informative um, YouTube channel. And that's how we kind of cross paths. Um, he's fantastic, as you've seen during this interview, just explaining stuff in very sort of very simple <laughs> layman's terms. Um, <laughs> so definitely worth subscribing to his channel. But there'll be links to that in, in the description as well. Um, Christian, is there anything else you think that we need to maybe discuss about the reports or do you think we've basically covered everything uh, as far as we need to? I think we've covered um, a lot of things really today. I mean, we don't want to go too much into detail and, and bore people with numbers left, right and centre. It'll be really interesting actually to see how the, uh, the media reports on, on this you know, kind of news coming through to see what kind of spin they put on it. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be quite interesting to see that in the, in the next day or so, you know, next 24, 48 hours. Yeah, well, well, I think we'll be, we'll be sort of taking a, a close look at that as well, because I think one of the, the things that we sort of always hear around these sorts of stories or reports is the word attack. And that's a very sensational word. It might be accurate, but I think, you know, the word that we've been using during this call is interaction and encounter, which for me is a little bit more, uh, more of the language I think we should be trying to use. Because as you say, whenever we go swimming, whenever we, we enter their world, their environment, we are going to encounter the wildlife, not just sharks, you know, it's a jellyfish or an eel or whatever, but the word shark attack or those two things, you put those things together and all of a sudden it's an amazing headline, very sensationalist, but does put a, a negative spin on potentially what's happened. So um, I'm interested to see like you, yeah, how the, how the media reports this, but we'll, we'll be reporting on that uh, as well. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to you. And like you said, yeah, the use of language is, is, is very important and you know as we move into the future hopefully start to veer away i mean you mentioned jellyfish there you don't read about jellyfish attacks on humans do you <laughs> eel attacks on humans it doesn't happen but shark attacks you read about all the time exactly exactly well christian thank you so much for taking some time out to talk to us and just sort of giving us you know the headlines around this intriguing report i'm sure we'll be talk doing a lot more videos like this um guys if there's any sort of particular topics you'd like us to talk about regarding sharks jaws whatever it happens to be, drop us a message in the comments or send us an email, mail at the dailyjaws.com and myself and Christian will be more than happy to jump on a call and discuss it. Okay, well guys, that's, that's it for us for today. Um, I've been Ross from The Daily Jaws. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, as I say, every, everything that we'll be talking about, there'll be links in the description. So if you want further information or further reading, please check it out. Um, Christian, it's normally traditional for me to leave the last word to the guest. So anything you'd like to say before we sign off? 
Thank you so much for having me. Can't wait to be back again. Good man. Okay, well, guys, thanks so much. Take care. Drink to your legs. Farewell and adieu. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can learn about Jaws, Sharks, movie making and everything in between. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram and be sure to check out our website, thedailyjaws.com. Until next time, we drink to your legs, farewell and adieu.